We're going to start our analysis of fluid dynamics with circulation, which is super important in fluids. Recall the circulation along a loop gamma is a quantity C sub gamma that is given by integrating the velocity one form alpha sub V over this loop. What it does is it measures the total amount of work done along that loop or the total amount of spin of the vector field. Now, our first application of all the big fundamental theorems is going to tell us something about circulation along a loop in a perfect fluid. This is a theorem, a big theorem. It is Kelvin's theorem. Kelvin's theorem says that if you've got a perfect incompressible fluid, then the circulation along a loop gamma that is evolving over time with the fluid is fixed. It does not change. It is constant. Let's think about what that means, right? The circulation C sub gamma is going to depend on T. If I take the derivative of that with respect to T, I get zero. The circulation is constant. Okay, that's what Kelvin's theorem says. Let's be careful about this. Notice that this means that the loop is composed of particles that are evolving, that are moving in the fluid according to the velocity field, which itself is changing according to the Euler equations. And what this means physically is that as this loop of fluid is shrinking or stretching or evolving, the velocity field along that loop is changing in order to compensate, in order to make the net spin about that loop constant and unchanging. All right, let's think about how we prove this. What do we do? Well, let's start with the basics. Let's take the circulation C sub gamma and differentiate this with respect to time t. So I'm going to write down the definition of the circulation. This is the integral over gamma of t of alpha sub v, the velocity one form for the fluid. Now, what I've got to do is pull that derivative into the integral sign. And that's the tricky part, because what I get is the material derivative of alpha sub v. Because everything is changing over time, I have to take that material derivative. Now, that's the part that you should probably go and check carefully by writing out all the components. But I'm just going to tell you that that is the appropriate way to pull the derivative inside the integral. Now, what do we do? We use the Euler equations to say that that material derivative is minus dh. It is a gradient one form field, and that is perfect. That's exactly what we need. What are we doing? We're integrating a gradient field along a loop, a closed loop. And by the independence of path theorem, that means that we get zero. Integrate a gradient along a loop, you always get zero. And that's it. That's what we were trying to prove. The circulation is a constant. Now, that's cool. But that last step there, ooh, that's important. That's the key. That's the fundamental theorem of integral calculus, giving us the key step in a big result. And we're just getting started.